a couple of years ago, I was selling my car on Craigslist. It was about 10 years old, and I had recently gotten a little bit newer car. So I figured that I would be able to sell it on Craigslist because it ran just fine and it was a decent car. I had bought cars on Craigslist in the past and sold a couple there as well. So I was familiar with how the website worked and everything, and I had never had a bad experience. But that all changed. After taking photos, I created the listing and I added lots of information about the car. Within two days, I got a text message from a woman who introduced herself to me as Jamie. She asked me if the car was still available and I said yes. Then she asked me if she would be able to come over and look at it. I said yes again. So after that, we arranged for a meeting for her to come and look at the car the following night. I already had the car out in the driveway and I had cleaned it and everything. So that night, Jamie arrived at the agreed time and came to the door. I went outside and met her and then started showing her the vehicle. She looked around at it and then looked inside of the car as well. I remembered that she sat in the driver's seat and I asked her if she wanted to take the car for a test drive. She said yes, so I got inside the passenger seat. It was a pretty short test drive though, with Jamie really just driving the car around the block and then going back. After that, she parked back in the driveway and we got out. Jamie told me that she decided that she was not going to buy the car. I said that was fine and then we said bye to each other. I figured there was something about the car that she didn't like. I just hoped that I would find a buyer eventually. So after that, I just went back inside. Well, hours later, when it was like midnight, I was about to go to bed. However, I was alerted when I thought I heard the sound of a car door opening and closing coming from not that far outside. My neighborhood is typically pretty quiet, so it was unusual to hear things like that. I went over to the living room and looked out of my front window. When I did, I saw this woman standing outside right near my car that I was trying to sell, and upon looking closer, I realized that it appeared to be Jamie. I wasn't sure what she was doing out there. I watched her as she appeared to look around in the windows of the car. She also appeared to try opening one of the doors, which was locked. Then, she walked around to the passenger side of the car, and she was messing around at one of the doors for a while. That's when I decided to ask her what was going on. I opened up the door and shouted to her, asking what she was doing. She looked up at me startled and then quickly ran off. She went all the way back to her car, got inside, and quickly drove away. After that, I wasn't really sure what to do. I tried texting her, asking her why she came to my house, but I think she blocked my number because it didn't look like the text went through. After that, I never saw her again. I ended up reporting what happened to Craigslist. Looking back, I don't know if she was trying to steal my car or what, but I'm glad that I saw her when I did. I used to use Craigslist from time to time. I've bought and sold several things on it over the years. But something crazy happened several years ago. I was selling my PS4 and decided to list it on Craigslist. This was back when the PS4 was the newest PlayStation and the 5 hadn't come out yet, so I would be able to get a decent amount of money for it. The PlayStation worked perfectly fine and I also had some games that I was selling along with it. I took pictures and then listed them on Craigslist and hoped that somebody would buy it soon. Within a day, I got a response from somebody. A guy texted me introducing himself as Darren. He told me that he wanted to buy the PlayStation and asked when he could get it. I told him he could any time, and I even made sure that the price was good with him and he said yes. He asked for my address, but I said that we could meet at this local strip mall. I wanted to conduct business in a public space. Darren agreed to this and we arranged to meet the next evening at 7 o'clock. So I packed up the PlayStation and headed out to the strip mall. It was pretty close by and Darren arrived just minutes after me. We met in the back of the parking lot. Luckily, things were pretty quiet there that night. After meeting Darren, I showed him the PlayStation and asked him for the money. Darren told me that he didn't have the money right then, but that he would give it to me when he got paid the next week. I was angry when I heard that. I said no, if he didn't have the money, I wasn't going to give him the PS4. Darren seemed confused and upset, as if I was just going to give it to him. I told him that when he got paid, he could come and buy it then, but Darren demanded to get it now and claimed that he promised he would pay me. Of course, I was not that stupid and I still said no. I put the PlayStation back in my car 
and told Darren to text me when he had the money. Darren was still trying to get me to give it to him though. I closed the door and got inside my car as Darren was still trying to talk to me. When I got inside of my car, he started knocking at my driver's window and telling me to listen to him. I just ignored him though. I told him to move, but he refused. So then I just started backing out to leave. As soon as I did this, Darren finally left my car, but only to go to his vehicle. He then got inside of his car and I thought nothing of it. But as I was leaving and driving out of the parking lot pulling onto the road, I saw Darren's car come whipping up behind me quickly. When I got onto the road, he was right behind me. As I started driving home, I feared that he would follow me, so I took this random turn and sure enough, Darren did as well. I could not believe that this guy was going to follow me because I wouldn't fall for what was likely his scam attempt. I made a few more random turns, which Darren did as well. He was following extremely close to me, so close that I was afraid that his car might bump mine. His driving also seemed to be a little bit erratic. I wanted to call the cops, but then I had the idea to just drive to them. I quickly got directions to the nearest police station and then drove there. Darren followed me the entire way until he realized where we were going. I went into the parking lot and he drove away. I decided to report what happened, but I don't think anything could really be done. After that, I went home. Darren texted me that night cursing me out and I blocked his number. I ended up selling the PlayStation to someone else a few days later. After that though, I haven't done any buying or selling on Craigslist. I know that most of the time it works out fine, but I just don't want to take the chance and deal with any more sketchy people like Darren. I had a really creepy experience when buying something on Craigslist a few years ago. It all started when I was trying to look for a new TV. I should have just went to the store and bought one, but I was trying to get a deal, so I looked on Craigslist for some used TVs. You can usually get them for significantly less money, and most of the time they work great. So after looking for only like 30 minutes, I found one that I was sure I wanted to buy. I contacted the seller and was told that the TV was available and I could come and buy it the next night. The seller was a man named Joe and told me to come by at 9 p.m. So I got the cash and then the next night drove to his house. He lived just a few minutes away but in a different neighborhood. I parked on the side of the road across the street from his house. Then I walked up his driveway and then to his front door. I decided to text him that I was there before knocking on the door though. So I texted Joe that I had arrived. Then I stood there just off the front step and looked around. When I was doing so, I noticed something through the living room window. There was a man looking out of it towards me. I only saw him for a moment before he disappeared. I figured that it was Joe, but moments later, I received a text from him. He said that he was not home, but he would arrive back in a couple of minutes. He said that I could wait right outside. I was confused but then figured the guy in the house maybe also lived there or something. But to be honest, I was a little bit suspicious. So I just stood around the front step and waited like Joe asked me to. A couple of minutes went by. I was just casually standing there looking around. I didn't see the guy in the window anymore, but I soon heard what sounded like the back door to the house opening and closing. I couldn't confirm it because I could barely hear it, but that's what it sounded like. I figured whoever I had seen might have gone out back. But still, I was just waiting for Joe to get back. A couple more minutes went by. I was still there and starting to get impatient. I looked at my phone, but there was no new notifications or anything. Then, all of a sudden, I heard this noise behind me. I looked back, and I saw this man walking out from behind a large tree not far away from me in the front yard. I was pretty sure that this was the same guy I had seen looking out the window at me. He saw me, and he was not at all approaching me in a friendly way like to greet me. Before I could even ask what was going on though, I saw the guy start to lunge towards me. I quickly moved away and then just ran. It was really all out of instincts and just a reaction. I sprinted away through the front yard as the man actually chased after me. I sprinted for my car, running as fast as I possibly could. Thankfully, I was able to make it. I got inside and closed and locked the door behind me. Moments later, the man got to my car. He tried opening the door and I was busy starting the engine at that point. He banged on the window like twice before I hit the gas and sped away, leaving him standing there in the street. I got out of that neighborhood and was so confused that I didn't even know what was going on. I drove back to my house and on the drive I was able to calm down. 
When I got back, I looked at my phone and had no new calls or texts. That's when I realized that Joe was probably the same person who tried to attack me, and he was looking at me through the window. The whole thing must have been some kind of a setup. Why? I'm not exactly sure. I ended up going back on Craigslist to look for the listing so that I could report it, but it was gone. Joe also blocked me. I still reported it to Craigslist, and I also notified police. Hopefully Joe didn't try to scam anybody else. I'm really glad that I got out of that situation safely. Back when I was poor and in college, I used to sometimes look on Craigslist to see what people were giving away for free. Most of it was junk or stuff that I didn't want, but occasionally there would be good things there. I actually once got a pretty decent TV for free, as well as a couple of other pieces of furniture, so I would just go on here and there and look around. It was casual, and I certainly wasn't expecting to find something every time that I went on. But one day when I went on the free stuff, I saw a listing that had literally just been posted like five minutes prior. It was an ad for a MacBook laptop for free. At first, I thought that it was one of those scams where somebody lists something for free, but when you actually click on it, the description says that it's like $5,000 or whatever. So when I clicked on the ad, the person said that it was actually free. They said that it worked fine and mentioned something about because of their job they had a bunch of laptops. It was not the newest MacBook, but about five years old. This made it seem more legitimate to me. Still, this was an amazing opportunity it seemed. And I know what you're saying, it's way too good to be true. But to me, it was worth reaching out and asking. So I quickly texted the number listed, and I asked if the laptop was still available and said that I would like to get it if it was. Within a minute or so, the number responded saying that it was. They asked me for my name and I told them. About an hour or so later, they responded again with an address saying that I could come and pick it up that night at about 10 o'clock. I was excited, and I thought that I was getting the deal of a lifetime. So that night, I left my place a little before 10 and drove out to the address. It was a lot farther away than I expected, probably about 20 minutes. When I got to the neighborhood, it looked pretty sketchy to be honest. Most of the houses were run down, and the yards were overgrown. I started to get a bad feeling, but I was already there, so I wasn't just going to leave. I found the address and then parked on the side of the road in front of it. I walked up to the house, which did not appear to be in great shape. I texted the owner that I was there and then went up and knocked on the door. After a few moments, I heard somebody walking up to the door and then it opened. There was a guy with long hair and a patchy beard who answered. He said hi and then instantly invited me to come inside. I walked in the house, which looked pretty run down. It almost looked abandoned to be honest. Almost every light was off, except for this dim one in the other room. The man told me to go into that room, and so I did. This appeared to be a bedroom or an office, but there was no furniture in it except for these two old chairs and a folding table. The guy told me to have a seat, and I did in one of the chairs. The man said that he would be right back and go get the laptop. By now, I was completely sketched out by this whole thing. I was kicking myself for even entering the house, but I was hanging on to the hope that I would get a free laptop. Looking back, I should not have even gone to the house. If somebody lived in a place like that, why would they be giving away a free laptop? Well, after the man left the room, I just sat there and waited. But the longer I did, the more nervous I became. Then, suddenly, the door slammed shut to the room that I was in. I could tell that somebody had closed it and the wind hadn't blown it shut or anything like that. I got up and stood there for a moment. The door did not open. I walked over to it and tried to open it, but it was being held shut. Somebody was on the other side. I was terrified now. I went back inside the room and looked around. I didn't know what to do and I panicked. I felt like somebody might run in and attack me or something. There was this one closet in the corner of the room, so I went inside of it and shut the door. Then I called 911 on my cell phone. I quietly told the dispatcher of my situation and I gave them the address as well. Then I waited. I was expecting at any moment somebody to enter the room that I was in. I hoped that I would be able to hold the closet door shut if they tried to open it or something. But nobody came in the room. Things were just silent. About 10 minutes later, the cops got there. I remember that they came inside of the house and I left the room, finding that the door was no longer being held shut. The police searched the house thoroughly, only to find that nobody was there. They also searched the property and nearby area and came up empty-handed. 
But they did tell me that the house I was in was abandoned and nobody lived there. So whoever lured me there did not actually live there. I was extremely creeped out. After that, I told the police everything that I could about the situation and then I went back home. The Craigslist ad had been deleted by then. I also found out that the phone number that I'd been texting with was a burner phone. I don't know why the guy just left, but I'm glad that he did. Maybe he realized I had my phone and I could call the police. I honestly have no idea, but I'm glad that I made it out of there okay, and I haven't been on Craigslist since. I live in a fairly small and quiet town. I live by myself, a little bit out in the country. The story I'm about to tell you happened just a few months ago. One night, I was sleeping, but woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I remember that when I woke up, I heard my phone vibrating on the nightstand next to me. I ignored it and just tried to go back to sleep, but whoever was calling me called again. After probably the third or fourth call, I finally woke up completely. To that point, I had kind of been half awake, just wanting to go back to sleep. I hadn't really realized how strange it was to receive a random phone call at this hour. I looked at the phone and it simply said, unknown number on the screen. This was also kind of odd. Now that I was awake, I could tell whoever it was really wanted me to answer and I accepted the call. I said, hello, but at first heard nothing on the other end. Then I heard the sound of a heavy and deliberate breathing. That was it. I asked multiple times who was calling but all I got in response was the breathing noises. This had to be a joke. How else could I explain this? I was pretty sure that was the case. I mean, who calls up someone at two o'clock in the morning and just breathes on the other end? They probably found some way to not make their number show and were pulling a prank on me. I said something like, very funny, and then I hung up on them. Then I went back to sleep. They actually did not call me for the rest of the night and I woke up the next morning for work at my normal time. It was about 7 a.m., and after getting up, I went into the kitchen. My kitchen is kind of at the front of the house. That's when I noticed something on my front window. There was like a post-it note, and it was sticking to the window, and I found this really odd. It hadn't been there the night before. It was in obvious view of me, and somebody had to have put it there recently. I walked outside and picked it off the window. There was writing in pen on the sticky note, which said, Call me back. I got the chills when I read it. I connected it to the call that I had gotten at 2 o'clock in the morning. This was really odd. Now, I don't just live in a city where there are tons of houses. Like I said, I'm a little more out in the countryside. The houses are spread very far apart. I can barely even see my neighbor's house when I'm in my driveway. My driveway is also really long. For somebody to be on my property, which has multiple no trespassing signs on it, this was really strange. I went to the police that day about it, just letting them know. I didn't really feel like I was in danger, but I thought I would let them know about the situation because of how strange it was. It's a quiet town and these things don't happen very often. Now it very well could have been some guy in the neighborhood pulling a prank, but I've never had any pranks pulled on me like that before. I couldn't really think of anybody who would do something like that to me either. Today it remains a mystery and I haven't had any strange phone calls since. My friend Anna and I were staying in an old motel in the middle of Nebraska for the night. We were on a one week long camping trip, checking out national parks and camping out in nature. However, this particular night, there was a huge rainstorm coming. We decided that it would be smart to stay in a hotel room for tonight to avoid a terrible stormy night of sleeping and having all our gear getting soaked. The closest motel we found was a small cheap strip of rooms in the middle of nowhere. We bought our room for the night from the redneck looking guy working at the front desk. The rain started early in the evening, so we ended up staying in our room all night, drinking and playing some games to pass the time. Anna and I went to bed around midnight, and it was easy to fall asleep to the sound of the downpour of rain coming down all around us. I woke up at some point in the night, not exactly sure by what, but I noticed there was light pouring into our room. I sat up in bed and glanced towards the door where the light was coming from. We had chain locked the door where it could be opened just a crack and as I was fully awake now I realized that's where the light was coming from. The slim shiver of light shone all the way into the room, stretching its way across the floor to the foot of my bed. 
A quick glance over at the bed next to me confirmed that Anna was still sleeping, and it was not her who had the door open. Now fully awake, I decided to get out of my bed and check it out. Once I got past the foot of my bed, the doorway entered my view, and I was shocked by what I saw. The door was indeed open a crack, just as much as the chain would allow, and an arm was reaching through the crack, fumbling around trying to undo the chain that was the only thing keeping the door from being completely open. Instincts and adrenaline took over for me immediately. I ran towards the door and slammed my whole body weight against it, forcefully closing the door onto the arm that was still reaching through the crack. I heard a grunt on the other side, and the arm withdrew from the crack, and whoever was on the other side vanished. Anna, who was awoken by all the commotion, called the police, alerting them that there was an attempted intruder at the motel we were staying at. It was close to 5 a.m. now, and even though it was early, Anna and I agreed to pack up our stuff and hit the road. As we left our motel room, the police were already at the front desk talking to the worker. We were approached by a cop and asked if we were okay and if we saw who the culprit was. The man who was working at the front desk also appeared and kept repeating that he didn't see anyone while he was working. Funny enough though, he was holding his right arm very gingerly, and even when he wasn't holding it pretending to cross his arms, it hung oddly at his side. Right before heading out, we informed the cops that we suspected it was the guy working at the front desk who was attempting to enter our room. They told us they would look into it, and that's the only information we were given before we drove off continuing our journey. I have no idea if they ever confirmed that the man working at the front desk had been the one attempting to enter our room. It was comforting to me though that even if the man didn't face any legal actions for that night, I had either broke his arm or severely injured it. Perhaps that would stop him from trying anything crazy like that again. It was March 12, 2019. I was home alone that night. My parents were on vacation and my sister was spending the night with her girlfriend. Nothing unusual. I was lying in bed, scrolling through my phone, when I received a text from my boyfriend. We'll call him Mike. Hey, what are you doing? I texted him back saying, I'm just chilling, nothing special. We chatted for a while, and we decided that he would come over to my house since everybody was gone. I sprang up from my bed and got myself ready. Some time passed before I heard a knock at my front door. That wasn't normal for him. He was one of those cliche boyfriends who would usually climb through my bedroom window. But since I was alone that night, I figured he didn't want to risk busting his ass. I went downstairs and looked through the peephole. No one was there. I then texted my boyfriend. Hey, where do you go? He opened the text and read it, but did not respond. I thought that was strange. My thoughts were immediately interrupted as I heard another loud set of knocks, this time at the back door. Now, I was becoming nervous, and a feeling of dread began to set in. I received another text, not from my boyfriend this time, but from his brother. I almost dropped the phone when I read what was on the screen. Mike lost his phone earlier today. He wanted me to tell you that he's going to be busy tonight studying for his exams. My heart practically skipped a beat when I received another text from Mike's number. You look so adorable in your pajamas. Now I knew that somebody I didn't know was outside, watching me. Thinking quickly, I called my boyfriend's number. I heard a ringtone from upstairs, in my bedroom. I ran down the hall to my parents' room. My dad always kept a gun in his closet. After locking the door, I pulled it out, asking myself if I could go through with actually shooting someone. I heard footsteps above me. They soon slowly made their way down the stairs. I called 911 and reported the break-in, whispering into the phone.
The dispatch told me the cops would be on their way. My stomach dropped when another call came in. The intruder had dialed my number. In all the panic, I forgot to put my phone on silent. I then heard laughter coming from down the hall. <laughs> I cannot explain to you how terrifying it is to hear someone laughing in that situation. I was now scared for my life. I then heard a loud bang on the bedroom door. It soon flew open as the intruder entered the room. I saw the shine of a knife in his hand as he raised it into the air. I staggered back but aimed my father's pistol and pulled the trigger. Mind you, I had never fired a gun before. My dad showed me how to operate it, but hadn't taken me to the range yet. I can't explain how this happened because my eyes were closed. But the shot I fired knocked the knife from the intruder's hand. I then aimed the gun at his head. Don't move, I told him, making my voice sound as aggressive as possible. The guy must have thought I was a sharpshooter and had no idea that I actually got lucky. The police soon arrived and forced their way inside the house. They followed my shouting and made their way to the bedroom, where I still had the intruder at gunpoint. Two officers put the man into cuffs. Once I got a good look at him, I can honestly say that I didn't recognize him from anywhere. Once he was in the back seat of a cruiser, one of the officers sat me down and took my statement. Long story short, my parents ended their vacation early, and my sister came home the next day. We still have no idea how long he had been watching me for, and how he managed to get Mike's phone. We're all glad that I made it out of that situation alive, and that the man is where he belongs, in jail. This happened back sometime in the very early 2000s. During this time, I was living alone in a one-bedroom apartment that I had recently moved into. I was aware of a few of my neighbors, but not many of them. The building seemed to have people moving in and out quite often. It was a larger apartment building that had a giant parking lot next to it where all the residents parked. The apartment itself was pretty old, and not the nicest, but it was alright. So after a few months of living there, I remembered that one night, I heard this sort of pounding noise coming from the next apartment over. I wasn't sure what it was. I knew that it was my next door neighbor though. The noise went on, on and off, as it got later and later. Soon, I was trying to go to sleep, but the sounds kept going. I had a hard time falling asleep because of it, and eventually, I couldn't take it anymore and I had to go over there. I really didn't want to, but I was left no choice. So I walked over and then knocked on the door. After a few moments, a man opened the door. He was a large man that was bald and wore baggy clothes. He looked at me confused and slightly annoyed. I told him that I was trying to sleep and I was hearing him do something. I asked him if he was hanging stuff on the walls or something like that. The man said no, he was building a table. I guess that made sense, but I asked if he could quiet down because I could not sleep. The guy looked really annoyed, but said okay, and then shut the door in my face. I felt really awkward after, but it was almost midnight, so I went back, and the man did stop, and I was finally able to get some sleep. The next I saw of the guy was actually the very next day, though. It was nighttime once again. Now I was about to go to sleep. Out of nowhere, I heard this really loud music coming from next door. It was the same guy's apartment. I rolled my eyes when I heard it. I just hoped that it wouldn't last for very long. The walls in this apartment were pretty thin, so noise traveled. But still, this music had to be almost full blast, and it continued until past when I wanted to go to sleep. I didn't want to go over to his place for a second night in a row. I wondered if this was his way of getting back at me or something. I mean, he knew that he was being loud. So I tried my best to sleep. I didn't have any earplugs, but I tried covering my ears and stuff, but I just couldn't. After trying to fall asleep for over an hour and the music still continuing, I realized that I had to go confront the man. So I left my apartment and I walked on over. 
After knocking on his door, he did not answer. I waited there for maybe two or three minutes, knocking several more times. Soon, it was clear, though, that the guy was not going to answer me. So then, I headed back to my place. I went back inside, hoping maybe the guy would eventually turn it off, or I could get some rest anyways. Just after making it back to my place, though, I thought I heard a door open and close from the hallway. Then, moments later, I heard somebody trying to open my apartment door. Luckily, I had locked it right away when I got back in, which was a habit. This seemed strange, so I went over to check. The man was standing right there. I did not want to open the door because I had a bad feeling. He remained there for a few moments, just standing there and looking angry. Then he turned around and walked back to his place, with the loud music still playing. He did not turn it off. I don't even know when I fell asleep, but when I woke up the next morning, the music had been stopped at some point. After that, I reported the guy to the apartment, but I guess he moved out a very short time later. It was good because I didn't have to deal with him anymore. That was the craziest memory of living in an apartment. I live in what I would describe as a pretty standard apartment. The last one I lived in two years ago was very similar as well. The building had a few basic hallways and tons of units. I had a parking space in the underground garage and there were several apartment buildings in the complex. It was like right in the middle of my lease when I had been living there for about six months when some weird things happened. My apartment was on the second floor of the building, kind of towards the end of a hallway. One night, I was awoken to the sound of banging on my door. This happened to be a Friday night at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Somebody was repeatedly banging on my door, and it seemed about as loud as they could. I just laid there in bed and waited for it to stop. But after it continued for about 10 seconds straight, I decided to get up. However, once I had made it out of my bedroom, the knocking finally stopped. I could hear somebody walking away down the hallway then. I went to the peephole and I looked out, but the person was gone. I didn't really want to open the door and look out into the hallway, so I didn't. I just went back to bed and didn't hear any more knocks. The next day, I was thinking about it, remembering being woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I figured at that point it was probably somebody who was coming home drunk from the bars or something. It made perfect sense, because it had been a Friday night and they probably got back and just started banging on a random door either just to mess with somebody or because they accidentally went to the wrong place. So I really wasn't that concerned about it. However, at some time the next week, it happened again. Once more, I woke up to someone pounding on my front door. I had a bad feeling about it, not knowing who this was. I didn't really know any of my neighbors. I wasn't sure if it was one of them or somebody else that was random. This time, I did not get up. I just waited for the knocking to end which took maybe 10 or 20 seconds roughly. When it finally ended, I stayed up for almost another hour because I really wasn't that tired anymore. I was finally able to get back to sleep a while later, but this was pretty annoying. Several nights went by before it happened again. This time, it was a little earlier though. I was still awake and in my living room watching TV. All of a sudden, there was a knock at the door. It seemed normal at first, but then it turned into a loud bang. I was so confused. I really didn't want to get up and I stayed on my couch. The knocking on the door lasted for the usual 15 seconds or so and then it stopped. This time I once more heard the person walking away and the rest of the night I didn't hear anything more. Nothing strange happened for a few weeks after that. I had almost forgotten about the whole ordeal. But then randomly it happened again. This time once more I was already awake and in the living room. It was pretty late though and was after midnight. As I sat on the couch in my living room, I heard this loud pounding on my front door. It was crazy just how hard this person was banging on it. I stayed where I was like usual. This time, it seemed to last a little bit longer though, like maybe around 30 seconds. Then I decided to get up and look. I walked over to the door and it was like the person heard me. When I got within a couple of feet of the door, the knocking stopped and I heard them walking away. I looked through my people and saw no one. This time, I opened up the door and looked out into the hallway. When I did, I actually saw someone. There appeared to be a man walking away, but I only saw his back. 
He did not turn around and look at me or anything. The man was walking quickly, and I only saw him for maybe five seconds. Then he reached the door that led to the stairs and opened it, and then he was gone. I went back inside after that. For the entire rest of the time that I lived in my apartment, I never heard any more knocking. I don't know who that guy was. I didn't recognize him. Why he chose to always knock on my door, I also don't know. It really gave me the creeps, though. This is my scariest experience of being at home by myself. It happened back when I was 12 years old. It was a long time ago now, but I still remember it really well. During this time, I lived with my parents, older sister, and younger brother. It was very rare that I would be at home by myself, but somehow it happened. It was a Friday evening, and my dad was out of town until the next morning for work. He didn't travel for work a whole lot, but every now and then he did. I remember that my sister was at her best friend's house and was going to be sleeping over there. As for my mom and brother, they were at a birthday party my brother was invited to. I was not invited, and my mom went with my brother because she was basically helping the birthday kid's mom with the party. So that left me home alone, all by myself, on a Friday night. My big plans were to just relax and play video games. I was excited about it, though, because I rarely got the entire place to myself. Our house was pretty average for the most part. There were two levels with all the bedrooms being upstairs. Downstairs was the living room, dining room, and kitchen. So after my mom left that afternoon, shortly after I got back from school, she gave me instructions on how to make a frozen pizza. I had never cooked before, but I loved frozen pizza, and at about 7 p.m., I cooked it. Everything went pretty well, and then I went into the living room and sat in an office chair right in front of the TV and started playing on my PlayStation. This went on for several hours. At about nine o'clock at night, I heard the sound of somebody stepping onto the front step where our door was. The living room was at the front of the house, so it really wasn't that far away. When I heard the person walk onto the front step, I assumed that it was my mom and brother returning from the birthday party. I kept playing, expecting to hear the door open at any point. But after several minutes went by, nothing happened. Nobody entered the house. I got curious and I got up and walked over to the front door to look outside. When I did, I didn't see anybody there. There was no one at the front door, and my mom's car was not in the driveway either. As I was looking there though, something caught my eye to the left. I looked and saw what appeared to be a man walking through the front yard. He was just barely in my sight for about a second before disappearing past what I could see. He had gone towards the side of the house, or maybe the neighbor's yard. I was a little nervous after this, but I assumed that the man had left. I didn't really know who he was or what he was doing. I kept watching around the front yard for a minute or so and saw nothing more. So after that, I returned to my video games. I couldn't help but be creeped out by what I had seen, so I was trying to take my mind off of it. And after about 10 minutes, it was starting to work. That is, until suddenly I heard the sound of somebody trying to open the back door to the house. Our back door was connected to the kitchen and went out to the patio. This sound was much louder and I instantly stood up. I ran over to the phone and called my mom's number. During this time, I didn't hear any more noises. I told my mom that somebody tried coming in the back door and she told me to call the police. She told me that she would be home as soon as she could, but the birthday party was still going on. So after that, I quickly ran upstairs and then went into my bedroom. Once I was there, I called the police and told them that I thought somebody was trying to break in. After giving them my address, I went and hid behind my bed. I covered myself with tons of blankets. I was really too scared to want to know what was going on. As I waited for the police to arrive, I was hoping that the man had just left and not tried breaking in. I wasn't hearing anything, but then again, I was covered in blankets. It felt like forever, but maybe 10 minutes later, the police got there. I remember that I got a call on the phone and was told that they were there. I never would have gone down and left my bedroom on my own. When that happened, I got up, but heard people talking, so I stayed in my bedroom. I remember a while later, there was a knock at my bedroom door. I was terrified, 
until I heard a voice on the other side say police. Then I answered the door and there was an officer there. He told me that they had caught a man who had just broken in. I was told that the police got there in the nick of time, and they really did. The man had somehow got the back door to the house open. He had literally just entered when the police arrived. The man was arrested and luckily didn't get far into the house. I was honestly shocked when I heard it, but luckily everything turned out fine. He wasn't able to steal anything or do any damage. The back door needed a little bit of fixing, but it wasn't a huge deal. After that though, I didn't want to stay home by myself for a while. One time, I got back from work a little bit later at night. I lived alone in an apartment on the second floor during this time. After getting back home, I changed and then went into the living room. I was sitting on the couch, eating, when I heard this loud noise coming from next door. It sounded like the next door neighbor was banging on the wall. It was extremely loud and went on for almost a minute. I was really confused when I heard this. I wasn't making any loud noises or anything. The TV was on, but the volume was really not that high at all. But yet the neighbor was pounding on the wall as if I was being really noisy and he wanted me to be quiet. I didn't really know why else he would be banging on the wall like that. And even if he was bothered by the TV, I didn't even think it was loud enough for my neighbor to be able to hear it. I wasn't hearing any other loud noises from anywhere else. Just to be sure though, I muted the television. For a short time, everything was quiet. But then, the loud banging on the wall started up again. I really had no idea why my neighbor would be doing this. I wasn't aware of making them angry or anything. And to be honest, I didn't even know who my next door neighbor was on that side. I never really saw them. I had been living in my apartment for like six months, but I had never met or seen hardly any of my neighbors. The banging stopped after a short time. I didn't know what to make of this, but for the next couple of minutes, everything was quiet, so I just kind of moved on from that. Except, about five minutes later, there was suddenly a loud knocking coming from my front door. It seemed as though whoever had been banging on my wall had now moved to my front door. After it continued for about 30 straight seconds, I decided to get up. I walked over to the door, and when I approached, the banging stopped. I looked through my peephole to the other side, but nobody was there. Whoever had been knocking had now left, and I had no idea who it was. I was just assuming that it was my next door neighbor, but I didn't even know what they looked like. I considered going over there and asking them what the deal was, but I decided not to. Based on how hard they were pounding on the walls and door, I just had a bad feeling about it. So instead, I just moved on again and tried to ignore it. I was hoping that there would be no more banging on my walls or door that night. And luckily, there wasn't. So the next day, when I was leaving for work, I walked out of my apartment and went down the hallway. There was an elevator and a set of stairs right next to it. Now, I was always in the habit of just taking the stairs, and I very rarely used the elevator. So after walking down the hallway, I had passed by my next door neighbor's door. A moment later, I heard the door open. This was the same neighbor who had seemingly been banging on the walls and my door last night. I remembered the previous night, but I just kept walking. When I made it to the stairs and started to go down, I heard whoever it was walking behind me. The stairs turned and I went around the corner and glanced up. I saw a man walking down the stairs, but I did not directly look at him. But apparently, that was the guy who lived next to me. After walking down the stairs, I went through the lobby and then left out the front door. The guy that was walking behind me did exactly the same thing. He followed me out the door and was walking behind me as I was on the sidewalk. I parked in the large parking lot that was at the complex. After getting to my vehicle, I got inside. I then saw the guy kind of standing there and looking in my direction. He was about 50 feet away, and I didn't know what his deal was. He just stood there as I drove off and went to work. I had never seen that guy before, but I guess that was my next door neighbor. So I worked that day, and when I arrived home afterwards, it was a little bit later at night once again. By the time I arrived back, I think that it was about 10 o'clock. So I went inside of my apartment building and then walked up the stairs. 
when I made it to the top, I walked down the hallway towards my door. Right after I passed by my next door neighbor's door, I heard it opening again. I just had a bad feeling, and I walked faster to get to my door. I heard his footsteps enter the hallway. When I arrived at my front door, I quickly unlocked it and opened it up. As I was closing the door behind me, I heard the footsteps still approaching. I closed and locked my door, and probably five seconds later, my neighbor actually tried opening it. Then, there was once again more really loud banging coming from the other side of it. I really couldn't believe this guy. I looked out and saw him relentlessly pounding at my front door. I moved away from it then and was about to call the police. I went and got my phone, but then he stopped. At that point, I put the phone down. I didn't want to get in some war with my next door neighbor. Clearly, he had some problems with me and he had tried entering my apartment but I also didn't know if maybe it was just a misunderstanding or something. I decided that if I heard any more banging on the door or walls or anything, I was going to go over and give him a piece of my mind, and hopefully he wasn't dangerous. But after that, nothing else happened. So I would say about a week later, one day I saw another neighbor in the hallway. I went over and introduced myself to her. I had seen her a couple of times before and knew that she lived here. I told her about what happened and asked her if she knew the guy who lived next to me. She told me that nobody lived there, and the apartment had been vacant for a while. This was crazy to hear. I then went to the offices of the apartment complex and asked one of the agents. They confirmed that the unit next to mine was vacant and had been for several weeks. My mind was blown after hearing that. I never saw that guy again or heard anything else. I don't live there anymore, but I still get the creeps thinking back to that.